Well, good evening. I hope you can hear me. Um, it's nice to see everyone again. And thank you for joining us for the second in our series of Advent Reflections. Um, we did look last week at the prophecies in the Old Testament that spoke of the coming of the Lord Jesus, how he would come. And we discovered that the Old Testament is full of prophecies, predictions about the coming of the Savior. And then there is a long gap of about 400 years from the end of the Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament. And I don't know if you know what a caesura is, but a caesura is uh, when a composer is composing a piece of music and he decides that he will put into the music a, a pause, a, a silence, a period of silence that just heightens the expectation. And so uh, this period between the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's like a caesura, where the prophecies, the predictions of the coming of the Lord Jesus have been made, and then there's this period of silence, and there's a heightened sense of expectation. And then when the New Testament opens, we have the great intervention as the Lord Jesus is coming into time, and the predictions are going to be fulfilled. The angel Gabriel, we're going to think about the angel Gabriel today, and the angel Gabriel is given a mission. And uh, without being irreverent, I think that possibly he checked his instructions two or three times, because his mission was to leave the immediate presence of God in heaven and to go to a city called Nazareth. And I can almost hear him thinking, did I hear that correctly? Is it Nazareth that I have to visit? He had visited once before, just a few months previously, and he'd gone to Jerusalem, and he'd gone to the temple. But Nazareth was no place for an angel. Nazareth had a very bad reputation. It was a place of immorality. It was a place of obscurity. It was a place that was despised by the people who lived in Israel at that time. In fact, to call someone a Nazarene was an insult. But no, uh, the instruction is quite clear. He's to leave the throne room of God in heaven, this angel Gabriel, and he is to go to Nazareth on a special mission. We're going to read about that mission. We find it recorded in Luke chapter 1. Let's turn to Luke chapter 1 and read in verse 28. Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin who's uh, betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Amen. Theologians refer to this as the Annunciation. The Annunciation simply means the announcement. This is, this is basically a birth announcement. Now, normally, when you turn to your newspaper to the, the announcements, uh, you discover that announcements of a birth are normally made after the baby is born. But this is an unusual announcement because it's made before the baby is born. And so we're going to think tonight about this startling announcement that was made. The angel Gabriel. Gabriel 
You might remember, if you read the Bible, that Gabriel appeared in the Old Testament to the prophet Daniel. And his name means the strong one of God, God's strong one. And here he is sent down to this young woman, possibly a teenager, and he's going to announce something to her that is going to change the course of human history. What an announcement. We're going to think about this birth announcement uh, tonight. We're going to think that there were three startling parts to this announcement about the baby who was going to be born to Mary. First of all, he will be Mary's son. Secondly, he will be David's son. And thirdly, he is God's son. Now, that's what we're going to think about tonight. What an amazing announcement. Mary, you're going to have a child. Yes, he's going to be your son. He'll be Mary's son. But he'll also be David's son. And you'll find that he's going to be called God's son because he is the son of God. What an amazing announcement. Let's think about this. Firstly, the angel Gabriel tells Mary that she is going to have a child. She is going to have a boy. She is going to bring forth a son. He will be the son of Mary. Dear friends, this tells us that this baby is going to be a human being. He is going to be a true human. You know, when God became a man, when the incarnation, as we call it, happened, it was not the case that, that somehow this was pretending to be a man or just acting like a man. It wasn't like someone dressing up to play a role in a play or a performance. This was a tremendous change, which meant that when God came into our world, he actually was born as a baby, a human being. And so, Mary, your baby is going to experience what human beings experience apart from sin. He's going to know what it is to be weary, to be hungry, to be thirsty. He is going to be capable of suffering, and he's going to be capable of dying. And dear friends, this is the wonderful thing that suffering and death are not somehow the unfortunate consequences of him becoming a human being. They are the reason for him becoming a human being. He must, God had to become, if we can say this reverently, a human being in order to be able to suffer and to die. And Mary, he's going to be your son. He's going to be Mary's son. And you're going to stand one day beneath a cross and you're going to watch as your child suffers and bleeds and dies. And you're going to feel like a sword is cutting through your very heart and your very soul. He's going to be a real human. He's going to feel and experience suffering and pain and death. And you're going to call him Jesus, which means Jehovah the Savior, because by his very suffering and death, he is going to provide salvation for mankind. What a wonderful announcement. He's going to be Mary's son. He's going to be capable of suffering and dying. And it's no, it's no accident, it's no coincidence that Mary, who brought him into the world, is going to stand when he leaves this life in death. And she's going to stand beneath the cross. And there's a lovely carol. What child is this? I'm sure you know the carol, what child is this? And very often uh, in the versions that are played and sung, they leave out these words, nails, spear will pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail, the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. He's going to be Mary's son. But then the angel says, not only is he going to be Mary's son, he's going to be David's son. He says, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And God had promised way back in the Old Testament to King David that one of his descendants would one day rule. And his kingdom would not simply be a temporary earthly kingdom, but his kingdom would be an eternal kingdom. He would reign forever. And so the angel is announcing that this baby who's going to be born, he's not only going to be your son, 
He's going to be David's son. He's going to be the Messiah, the long-promised deliverer. And he is going to one day rule and reign upon the throne, and he is going to have an everlasting kingdom. It will be a, a universal rule, an absolute rule, an eternal rule. And dear friends, the baby in the manger one day is going to rule the universe. He is going to be the king of kings and the lord of lords. As we look at the world today, Sometimes we're tempted to think that men are in control and they're making a the right mess of it. And then sometimes we think that Satan's in control and things are going so badly wrong and that's the reason why. And then we wonder if anyone's in control. But dear friends, one day the baby that was born at Bethlehem is going to be in control. The Bible says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and he is going to be the King of Kings, and one day he is going to be crowned with many crowns, and he will sit upon his throne. And no wonder the angel says to Mary, Gabriel says, he shall be great. There'll be no limit to his greatness and his power and his dominion. What a wonderful announcement this is, that he's not only going to be Mary's son, he's going to be David's son, the long-promised Messiah. Well, we sing the carol, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. He is the king. He is going to rule. He is going to reign. And dear friends, although his name is used as a swear word today, although he is despised and mocked in our world, one day the baby of Bethlehem will have universal, eternal, absolute, and total dominion over this world. Well, he's Mary's son and he's David's son. But the most wonderful revelation of all is that he's God's son, and he always has been God's son. In verse 32, the angel Gabriel refers to uh, the baby as he is going to be the son of the highest. That's a term that's used of God the Father. And then this is expanded later on because Mary has a problem, and she says, well, how can this possibly be? How can I bear a child at all? Because I don't know a man. I, I'm a virgin. I'm, I'm, I'm engaged to Joseph, but we're not married, and, and I've never known a man. And Gabriel now begins to explain in some way the amazing thing that is going to happen. And he tells her that she is going to bear one who is going to be called the Son of God. And careful Bible students and readers have noticed that in this passage, we have the Trinity. Gabriel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest, that's God the Father, the power of the highest will overshadow you. And he says, therefore, the Holy One that is born will be called the Son of God. And so here we have in the incarnation, as the Lord Jesus is being born, we have the Holy Spirit, we have God the Father, we have God the Son. And the, the amazing uh, announcement is made that this seemingly helpless baby who will lie in Mary's arms will be none other than a person of the Godhead, co-eternal, co-existent, co-equal, co-divine with the Holy Spirit and with God the Father. He will be the eternal Son of God. How amazing. Charles Wesley got it right when he wrote the carol, Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Now, I like traditional carols, but there is one uh, quite modern carol which I think just is absolutely wonderful when it's talking about this. And, of course, it's called Mary, Did You Know? And the last line of that carol goes like this. Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? The sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. I am is a great title of, of God. And so, dear friends, what an announcement. I can imagine Mary being absolutely overwhelmed by this, being, being stunned by it. She can hardly take it in. We read later on that she's going to think about these things. She's going to ponder them in her heart because she can hardly grasp them. First of all, this child is going to be Mary's son. He's going to be human. He's going to be a human savior. And then he's going to be David's son. He's going to be the promised savior. But he is God's son. He's the divine savior. 
And she simply says, well, I don't understand it, but I accept it by faith. And she says, be it unto me according to your word. Dear friends, I'm so glad that we don't need we don't need a degree in theology. And even if you had a degree in theology, you still wouldn't understand the incarnation. You still wouldn't understand what's happening here. You still wouldn't be able to, to unpack the, the wonder of this amazing miracle that God, the creator of the universe, is now going to appear on earth as a baby child. And that he's coming to suffer and bleed and die for sinners. He's coming to be the savior. And one day he's going to be the eternal king. You could hardly, you can't understand that. But God asks you to believe it, to accept it by faith. And I just want to ask you now as we close, do you believe it? Do you believe that the baby who was born at Bethlehem, yes, he was Mary's son. He was a true human being. And he was coming into this world as a human baby so that he would be capable of suffering and dying on the cross for my sins. But thank God he rose from the dead. And the Bible tells us that one day he is going to rule and he's going to reign as the son of David. He is going to be the great Messiah. He is going to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and every knee is going to bow to him. And he is God the Son. He is divine. And I'm glad I can say tonight he's my savior. I don't understand it, but I believe it. I believe it with all my heart and I trust in him and I've trusted him to be my savior. And at this Advent time, as we await the coming of Christmas, as we think about the events that preceded his first coming, it's wonderful for those of us who believe in him to recognize the greatness of this person who has saved us, that we've trusted in him, our hope is in him. He is truly human. He is the human savior. He is the promised savior. He is the divine savior. And I can say tonight, he's my savior. Is he your savior? We're going to close now in prayer. If you've never trusted him, you can, you don't need to understand it. You don't need to try and work it all out, but you do need to believe it. And you need to come to him and confess, I'm a sinner, but I'm so glad that the Lord Jesus came, that God the Son came to save me from my sins. He died on the cross to pay the price. He rose from the dead, and by simply trusting him, my sins are forgiven and they're gone. What a savior. What a Christmas. What a message. What a birth announcement. There's never been anything like it. There will never, there will never be anything like it again. Let's bow now in prayer. Father, we give thanks for the wonder of this message. What an announcement to come from heaven. And we just pray that the something of the wonder of it might grip us tonight. And we pray that if anyone listening to this has never accepted this wonderful Savior for themselves, we pray that even tonight they might do that by simply believing in him. And so we praise thee for sending thy son, for giving him. And we give thanks that because of his death and burial and resurrection, he's able to give eternal life. He's able to give forgiveness to all who trust in him. We pray for thy blessing as we give thanks in his name. Amen.